Hello everyone, Taki here. Today we're going to take a look at the brand new RG280V. This is actually a device that I first saw about four months ago, and I've been eagerly awaiting this day to finally showcase it. One of the cool things about doing what I do is that I have the opportunity to see the future a little earlier than most people, but it comes with not being able to talk about things that I'm excited about for long periods of time, and this device fits that bill. The original design that I saw of this handheld was completely black, so you can imagine how surprised I was to see that Ambernick decided to finally start drawing inspiration again from retro consoles like they did with the design of the RG300. There are a few interesting things about this device that make it worthy of considering, and I will do a deep dive on all of them in this video, but first, I want to quickly explain why I even care that this device exists in the first place, given all of the other devices that are already on the market. On the left side of the screen is the LDK, which was one of the very first handhelds that I ever purchased before I started reviewing devices on YouTube. This device was great for several reasons. It's cheap, it has a great community behind its firmware, and it was the only small form factor handheld that wasn't complete trash before today. I liked this device so much that I did countless things to try to make it better. I replaced the plastic screen on the front with a glass one. I tried to replace the dated TFT display with a bigger one from a digital camera, but it wouldn't fit inside the shell without some serious modding. I then discovered that the IPS screen from the RG300 can perfectly function on this device with custom firmware that one of the devs behind the Retro FW firmware was kind enough to make for me. And I tried to make that screen fit inside a metal shell that I was given before realizing that it just wouldn't work. I even went as far as to try and pull in a personal favor from the manufacturer of the LDK to get them to give me the CAD files of the device so I could modify them to open source the IPS mod to the community before that ultimately fell through. That brings me all the way to this point with the RG280V. It does all of the DIY upgrades that I tried to do on the LDK without any of the hassle and a drastically better product with significantly better emulation performance. The only real criticism that I have is that this device is not at the price that I would have hoped it to be, because if the 280V sold at the same price as the LDK, it would kill the retro handheld market. Now that we got that out of the way, let's take a closer look at what you get with the 280V. On the front panel, you have this metal plate that is obviously styled after the Famicom. The input buttons here are essentially the same ones used in all of the recent RG devices, so you'll be right at home if you're familiar with those, but if you aren't, this system uses conductive rubber buttons akin to what you'd find on many Nintendo products. Aside from this, the front glass has a slight curve to the surface that might be hard to see on video right now, but it is there and it seems to be superior to the glass DIY one that I added to my LDK, not to mention that this one also uses OCA so you don't have to worry about dust. We are also using what appears to be the same screen used in the RG280M, but with a slightly higher maximum brightness value that you may or may not be able to see on video. The picture quality from this display is amazing with good saturation, but it's a tad warmer than my personal preference. If this form factor had more competition, then I might be inclined to favor another product with a slightly cooler screen, but it's really just this versus bad TFT displays, so this is the clear winner. To see it, just look at how beautiful this movie sequence looks like from Final Fantasy IX on this tiny device. Added to that, this device has no light leaks whatsoever in complete darkness, and even the LED light is greatly subdued, especially when compared to the one on the LDK. Turning over to the side, you can see that we have the power and reset buttons located on the right side of the device, and on the left side you have both TF card slots and the volume rocker. The top of the 280V uses a shoulder button layout that they've never used before with the R2 and L2 slightly raised over the other two buttons. I've read some comments from people in the Chinese community complaining that this looks strange and it goes against the norm, but it really does make sense when you use the device. If you're holding the device in your hands like this, you would get some pretty noticeable strain on your hands when trying to use the R2 button if it was at the same height as the R1. It's already annoying getting to the button where it is right now, so it would be much worse if the button wasn't elevated. This may all just be a moot point though, because I don't know how many games you'd be playing on the 280V that can even make use of those buttons, but they are there. The L1 and R1 buttons are actually amazing, because you can get input very far off to the side with no problems, and I typically hold the device like this because it feels really comfortable, and the switch that they use on this device is so light that you don't need to apply much force to use it. This really helps when you're talking about playing on a device this small, and I have made extensive use of R1 during my Super Mario 64 playthrough to function as the Z button. That leaves us with the USB Type-C port and the headphone jack to round out the unit. Before we take a look inside, 
Here's the sound test from the back of the device at half volume. There's not really anything too groundbreaking on the inside of this device, but it is cool to see how they've managed to pack all of the functionality inside this device with a rumble motor, a 2050 milliamp hour battery, and an above average speaker inside this small form factor. The obvious omission here is the same one from the 280M in that this device does not include HDMI, but I honestly don't know where they would fit it if they did want to include it. The final important thing that I want to cover is the comfort of using the device. If you're familiar with the LDK, then you'll have a good idea of how this thing will feel to use. I originally started off using this device to play through Crash 2, and I don't know what it was, but I started to feel some discomfort around the second hour mark. Since this battery can really only last around four hours, I kind of just said that this can really just be a pick up and play device for short periods of time, but then I went off the deep end with Super Mario 64. You'd have to compile this on your own with your own copy of the game, but I was shocked at how well this game runs on this device and it's all thanks to the dev that's been working on this for the last few months. You obviously don't have an analog stick on the 280V, so this game is going to be super challenging to play and that's largely why I enjoyed playing it as much as I have. I never would have challenged myself to play this game in a way that it was never intended to be played if it weren't for the cool fact that the game is amazing on this tiny device. What's more, I've done 3-4 to four hour playthroughs in one sitting numerous times and I don't get any of the discomfort that I got from playing Crash 2. Comfortly using this device is going to come down to two things. First, the type of person using the device, and second, on the game that you're playing and how frequently you need to make use of buttons that will cause you strain. Obviously, you can just use this as a pick up and play device, and I have shared my two units with numerous people over the last few weeks, and it seems to be very popular, if not for the novelty of it all. I've already made so many videos on the performance of the JZ477 chip that I don't care to repeat, so I will just include them in a playlist link below and on screen if you are completely unfamiliar with the platform and you want to see what's possible. Just be aware that this device obviously does not include analog input. Anyway, my name is Taki and I've been your host on this RG280V review. If you have any questions at all about this device, feel free to leave those below and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you want to pick up one of these for yourself or for someone else, you can find an affiliate link to the Ambernix store linked below. I really wish this would have come in around the $60 to $65 price range because I think this product is the definition of a solid stocking stuffer, but this is the price you pay for an Ambernic device. If you like what you saw here and you want to support my work, consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you next time with another review. Happy gaming everyone. Taki out.